you noticed when we put the lights on after being in the dark room in meditation, there was a jolt. The eyes have to dilate. They have to change their character before they can adjust. During that process, it's obsessed with the light. The light comes in and performs a physical mutation on the eye structure so that it must respond to that new presence. That's a perfect metaphor for what happens when the inner light becomes awakened. There's a corresponding change in the internal eye that sees down and within into being. Now, if there was only darkness, you can imagine what the advent of that light is like on the inner eye. It must be blinding. It must be like getting struck by lightning in your face. And of course, there will be an after effect and a series of after effects in the total psychophysical being regarding what happens with the presence of that light. There will be ongoing transformation, a response within the physical, psychophysical, and spiritual psychophysical being to adjust and function within that light. And even beyond that, that light will at some point become stable, just like the light in this room now has become stable for all of us. We don't see the light anymore. We're not obsessed with its effects. We can just see each other. We can have a relationship. So, too, with the stabilization of the inner light, everything else comes back. Forms come back. The field of change reappears. Only it's within that backdrop or womb of light, of inner light but it no longer stands out at that point. That's what I want to stress. It's only during the process of awakening, of adapting to that brilliant presence that you have these so-called enlightenment experiences. And you will have them, there's no doubt. And they are tremendously potent. There are no words available in the human language in any human language to express what happens to the inner being as it wakes up into the divine light. But it is a real occurrence, even though we can't talk about it in the same way we can talk about concrete things. It is absolutely real, but in an internal sense. And you do go through it. It's something that your whole being will progress through until that light is stable. And then everything else begins to appear back in that. Many people become understandingly disconcerted when that great brilliance begins to lose its visibility, that is, as a primary object in awareness. When everything else begins to simply appear within it and it seems like, hey, wait a minute, I thought I was enlightened. Hmm. What happened? I was walking around for days like Jesus Christ and now I'm John again, now I'm Mary again. <laughs> I mean, this just isn't fair. <laughs>
And in this way, you learn the whole journey. You learn how to move through all the states of consciousness, which are disappearing degrees of ignorance. And then you live in the natural state where the awakening is just assumed and presumed and lived without effort, strategy, without calculation, without practices. It's just your life. Now, it's not as though you have come full circle in a literal sense and you go back to being ignorant. No. Things are and things are not the same. And you'll just have to go through your process to find out what that is like. I don't want to describe it and ruin the fun. Even if I describe it, it won't help. You'll say in the end, David, you lied to me. You lied. I listened to everything you said and this is not it. So you need to go back to this talk tonight where I explain that it's going to seem like a lie when you finally get it. But don't call me a liar because I'm telling the truth now.